I definitely wanted to, to move into some baking tips. Yeah. This is where people should pay to listen uh, to you. <laughs> I guess it's like such good tips, but I'll give um, it away for free. I know, totally. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so let's just start easy peasy. Like you're just talking to me and I've already revealed that I've never baked anything ever. Um, what are some tips you have for people who just want to go, okay, I just want to veganize a cookie or a brownie or a banana bread or something. And you, you've given some tips on the brand and a bread, but what's the sort of, I don't know if the ingredients work the same in cookies or brownies as they do in banana bread. So what what's just kind of the hot tips to veganize? Well, yeah, they, they don't all work the same. So if you were developing a recipe or veganizing a recipe, you know, you would want to try chia egg, which is just two tablespoons of chia mixed with five tablespoons of water, or mm -hmm. maybe a, a flax egg or a banana or applesauce. So there are a few different options that okay. you can try. But my biggest recommendation, if you're going to try vegan baking for the first time, is just find a vegan recipe. And that recipe developer will have already figured it out for you. Sometimes you can even just drop the eggs literally just just drop them they're unnecessary it's a waste of money it's a huh. waste of resources you can literally remove the eggs and they're fine that's what i did with my vanilla cake recipe <laughs> and in a lot of pastas a lot of pastas call for eggs and yeah. a lot of other pasta like most pasta that yeah. you buy on the shelf yeah. is accidentally vegan it's made with semolina flour and water and it doesn't right. need eggs so the egg is really unnecessary so in some cases you might be able to drop the egg but i'd say chia flax banana or applesauce okay. or even just egg there's the new product it's not new anymore yeah. liquid liquid just egg also can work really well we use the liquid just egg as an egg wash on top of our um croissants to give it that oh. sheen we mix it with a little bit of water um so so yeah i would just like whatever you want to make just google the name of the item with the word vegan in front of it i mean there are so many great recipes out there so i would just you know try a couple yeah. Yeah. There are. And, and just, yeah. <laughs> Follow the recipe. It's a Follow good start, recipe. right? It's, it's going to go really wrong. If, yes. Um, you've never done it before. So you use spelt flour in your breakfast cookie, but yeah. wheat, wheat flour in your chocolate chip yeah. cookie. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Wow. What's we definitely the have two kind of different lines at the bakery. There's a more nutrition focused line and then there's the more decadent line. I mean, oh. I love to have the nutrition focused stuff every day. I love to go there and like have it with my coffee and not feel like I've had something yeah. that's like really full of butter and white flour. Um, so the spelt flour used in the breakfast cookie, which is also ref refined sugar free, is just more wholesome mm -hmm. and um, less refined. And then the the all purpose wheat flour made in the double chocolate cookie is just the same flour that any non vegan bakery would use. You know, it's just the standard flour that everybody uses. If they're if you're making a chocolate chip cookie at home, that's the flour you're going to use. So it's just going to be the most decadent. It's going to lend to a most decadent cookie in the end. And the first ingredient of okay. that cookie that you mentioned though is chocolate <laughs> so it's okay. very very decadent <laughs> and yeah yes. that's just meant to blow you away it's meant to be fully rich and decadent uh you know there there's nothing health focused about that cookie <laughs> okay that's okay right like you said you just don't have it every day it, like yeah just, yeah I mean I, I do have a treat every day but maybe it's just a bite you know maybe it's like a square of chocolate right but, I do yeah the same. yeah <laughs> And then your your everyday cookie has no flour at all. I no. can get dropping the eggs, like, but I don't understand how you make a cookie with no flour at all. I know that secret? one's so funny. If you Google the classic name for that one is called a five ingredient magic cookie. Okay. I believe um, there's like a million recipes for versions of it online, but the bananas really help to bind and they bake so well. You'd really never guess. So the, there are three main ingredients in that cookie. It's bananas, mashed bananas, tahini, and whoa. Oats. So it's like a very protein packed cookie. We do add a little bit of maple syrup. You don't even need to because the bananas add a lot of nice natural sweetness. Um, and but, calcium. Tahini yeah. has more, right? The sesame seeds, more calcium ounce for ounce than dairy milk. Oh, exactly. That's, That's amazing. That's so cool. Uh, and then we just add a little bit of, we add a little bit of um, vanilla and cinnamon and salt and a, a few chocolate mm -hmm. chips just to make it feel a little more decadent because it is such a, a nutritious cookie. We called it the everyday cookie because you can literally have it every day and just not, you know, feel like 
you know, it's not super decadent at all. You're not going to, you know, feel the effects. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. more like an energy cookie. It's an energy cookie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what about uh, milks, plant milks? Do, are there different ones you use instead of cow's milk in the baking? Yeah, we use soy milk. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it's not, it's like, it does have a lot more protein than the average milk, like oat milk. But we use soy milk. It just works really well in most baking. We can also get big four liter tubs of it. Um, we uh, haven't found that in other milks. So that definitely comes into play because we do use so much of it. Um, we also use, we capture our leftover barista milk, which is a blend of oat milk and soy milk. And we also use that to prevent waste. Um, and we use that in the making of our croissants. Uh, but we're very specific with the milks that we use for um, the cafe side of things. Uh, for the lattes, um, yes. because we do tell people, if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. And I have not seen that happen ever. And we've sold almost 85,000 lattes since we opened. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's I mean, it's it really adds up like it's, you know, 100. We we did. Um, we looked into and it was like 100 liters. No, no, no. A thousand, t how many liters of cow milk saved? Um, but it's, I've been so you. thrilled that, yeah. um, you know, there has been so little pushback, but we're really passionate about Earth's own barista oat milk. And I don't believe it's available in the States. It's no. the most expensive one you can get here. I wish it wasn't so expensive, but um, we, we spend the money because we feel like it's gonna, it's gonna show people yeah. that you don't, you can, there is a product out there that is just as creamy Mm -hmm. as cow milk and again it's very neutral tasting but creamy tasting you yeah know? and the froth because that's a big thing that you yeah. can't do oh, with yeah. a lot of different milks. like it just doesn't yeah. Right. yeah yeah we're really focused on on the coffee and having a really strong coffee program you know we want to have a good coffee with your good baking yes <laughs> so coffee yes. is not an afterthought so we're very on it um and then we have the other plant-based milks available too for anybody with uh, like allergies we have soy milk soy barista milk we have coconut right. barista milk and almond barista milk i've always wanted to do like a homemade almond milk i used to make that all the time with like you know dates it is so good but that is a quite a long expensive process so for now we're sticking with the four bottled um barista milks so i was wondering about you have a swiss meringue buttercream foster oh yes yes right and so i mean wow i didn't get to have that when i was there but i was reading about it and is that do you do you use aquafaba like how do you make the meringue we do. Yeah, we actually, uh, we get it from a local Middle Eastern restaurant. We trade them, we give them baked goods. They give us their leftover water from cooking the chickpeas because oh. we, need, we need so much of it and we don't want to open a million cans of chickpeas and then ha have to use oh, chickpeas. How so sustainable we... of you guys. That's amazing. <laughs> that. Yeah, it works out really well for all parties. Um, and it's just a magical substance. It works It works just like egg whites. It's literally egg whites. You whip it up, you add a little cream of tartar, and it just turns into this like firm, whippable substance. And we mix in our vegan butter and our sugar and like vanilla, and that's it. And it really lends to a beautiful, fluffy icing. It's very different than a typical American buttercream, which mm. is just butter sugar and a tiny bit of milk and like vanilla. Right. So American buttercream is super dense, really sweet, like sickeningly sweet. And we really love to find the balance. We we never want things to be overly sweet. We don't want the wow. first taste to be just sweetness. You know, we want it to be flavor. And then the sweetness is complementing the flavor, you know, at that right level. So we find that the Swiss meringue buttercream is perfect for that. It's also really nice for our decorators um, to work with. It's really silky smooth. Um, yeah, it looks beautiful and it's, it's just so soft and nice. Mm -hmm.